Advancing concepts in our study of Algebra 2, after we learn how to write equations that involve quadratic systems, or sorry, quadratic functions, we also need to learn, to how, learn how to factor them so that we can begin the process of solving equations involving quadratics. Now, in your study of Algebra 1, you should have learned the process of multiplying two binomials together to arrive at a trinomial. Now, a lot of people refer to this as the FOIL method, where you take two items, you multiply their first, outer terms, inner terms, and last, so that you can arrive at a new function. Well, in this process, what we're going to do is we're going to reverse FOIL, and we're going to come to a function or a pair of binomials that are the factors of the original. So let's get started with a few examples. So let's begin with our expression here on the left. We have x squared plus 7x plus 10. Now in our foiling process, just as a quick reminder, you have a plus b being multiplied by c plus d. And we go through and we multiply our first items, giving us ac outer items, giving us AD, our inner items, giving us BC, and our last items, giving us BD. And when we have variables in the A and C positions, we end up with a common variable here and a squared variable in the lead, which means we can add those two items together. Now, applying that to factoring, what we're looking for is a pair of numbers that will multiply to our last term, our constant. So we need to multiply to 10 and add to our center term coefficient, which is 7. So what are two numbers that multiply to 10 and add to 7? Well, multiples of 10 are 1 and 10, 2 and 5, and then they're negatives. Negative 1, negative 10, negative 2, negative 5. In this case, the items that add up to be a positive 7 are 2 and 5. So, working with a basic equation where our a value is 1, we take two sets of parentheses, and we have x, pick one of these items, plus 2, x plus 5. And this is a factored expression equivalent to the original. If we were to go through and run our FOIL routine, F-O-I-L, just as a reminder, we multiply the first items together, we get x times x, which is x squared. Our outer items, x times 5, be 5x. Our inner items, 2 times x, just 2x. And our last items, 2 times 5, which is 10. Combine like terms, we have the 2x and 5x, giving us 7x, and we're back to where we started from. Let's take a look at the second example here. We are looking for items that will multiply to our last term, which is 2, and add to our center term, which is 3. Well, the items that multiply to 2 are only 1 and 2, then negative 1, negative 2. Since they add to a positive 3, we end up with x plus 2 times x plus 1. And those are the prime factors of our equation, or sorry, our expression we began with. This works fine when our b value is positive and our c value is positive with the a value of 1. But let's look when we start changing this up a little bit. So here, x squared minus 10x plus 24. We're looking for two numbers that will multiply to give us 24 and yet add to give us a negative 10. So what numbers will multiply positive and add negative? The answer is two negative numbers. So what two negative numbers will multiply to 24? And working through this, multiples of 24 are 1 and 24, 2 and 12, 3 and 8, 
4, and 6. The only ones here who add up to be 10 are 4 and 6. And since we need a positive multiple and a negative addend, what we're going to be doing is using a negative 4 and a negative 6. So we get x minus 4 times x minus 6. If we care to go back and check it, we have x squared for our first terms, minus 6x for our outer terms, inner, we get minus 4x, and last, negative times negative is positive, we get plus 24. Combine the middles, we have x squared minus, uh, sorry, 10x plus 24. So we're back to where we started with, so our work must have been correct using legitimate math. Now, next one. What are numbers that multiply to 63 and add to be negative 16? Well, 63, we are looking at multiple combinations of 1 and 63, uh, 3 and 21, 7 and 9. So, if we were to look at these, the ones that add up to be 16 are 7 and 9. They have to make a positive multiple and a negative sum. So, we're going to have x minus 7 and x minus 9. Now, what happens when we start having a mixture of positives and negatives along the line? So, if our product is negative, and our sum is positive, then what this means is we're going to have numbers that are one's positive, one's negative, that way they multiply to be negative, and whose sum is the, the larger of the two numbers, as far as absolute value is concerned, is the positive number. So, writing this down, we need numbers that multiply to a negative 35 and add to a positive 2. Well, 35 is just 1 and 35, uh, 5 and 7. And what we'd have to do is look at this and say, now, which one of these have multiples that are two items, two places on the number line apart? And the answer is 5 and 7. So, we get x with 5, x with a 7. Now, wondering which one's going to be positive, which one's negative? They have to add to be positive, so that means our larger one is positive. So 7 is positive, 5 is negative. Looking at our next example, numbers that will multiply to be a negative 12, add to be a negative 11. We're looking for items that multiply to 12 that are 11 items apart. All well, multiples are 12, we're looking at 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4. Which one of these are 11 items apart? It's 1 and 12. So we get x1 and x12. And now we are just curious as to what's going to happen, which one's positive, which one's negative. Since our sum is negative, the larger number needs to be negative. We get x plus 1 and x minus 12. So this covers a good majority of our procedures and processes. The only one that we are missing is what happens if our A value is not 1. The method I'm going to work with here is similar to lattice multiplication that many people learned when they were in elementary or middle school, but the process is reversed. So in the past, all the examples we've used, we were looking for items that multiplied to our last. But a quick reminder here, when we FOIL, the first and last items, A and D, work together. And we get everything in here at the same time. So, we will actually need numbers that multiply, working through here, multiply to be 4 times 5, our A times C, which is 20 and then add to our center term, which is 9. Now, numbers that multiply to 20 and add to 9 actually are what we're given here, 4 and 5. So, what we're going to do 
is we're going to make a box a two by two box and in our first position we are going to place our 4x squared in our second position sorry in our last position lower right hand corner we're going to place our 5 and now for what's in the remaining 2 we need the items that multiply to 20 and add to 9 in this case they are 5x and 4x now what we're going to do is we will factor the rows and the columns in this first column what's the common factor between 4x squared and 5x and it's simply x in this last column what can we divide both 4x and 5 by the answer is 1 now rows what's the greatest factor greatest common factor between 4x squared and 4x the answer is 4x and what's our greatest common factor between 5x and 5 and our answer is just 5 so the rows and the columns that are left outside are our multiples our factors so what we have is we have x plus 1 times 4x plus 5 I know that kind of went a little bit quick so let's take a look at another one we have here 2x squared minus 17x plus 21 we need numbers that can multiply to 42 which is our 2x and our 21 as product and then that add to a negative 17 well for 42 we have 1 and 42 and again we're looking for items that would have a sum of 17 uh, 2 and 21 3 and 14 uh, 6 and 7 so as we go through the ones that we need that add up to 17 are 3 and 14 so using our box we will take 2x squared and place in the first position we will take the 21 and place in the last position and then we will split the negative 17x by its pieces which was negative 3x and negative 14x now there is a problem of caution here if our product is positive and our sum is negative then the only way that can happen is if our uh, product item is a double negative because subtracting a negative is the same as adding so this 21 here needs to be remembered to be a double negative so now let's go through and factor our rows and columns in this first column our common factor is x second column our common factor is negative 7 first row we can get 2x and our second row I can get negative 3 so our factors here are x minus 7 and 2x minus 3 now there are other methods and alternative ways of factoring items when a is not 1 but a lot of them tend to have more room for error I like to practice with this but also be aware of the others so study this lesson up be reminded of foiling and factoring equations and be ready to move forward